Welcome back to How to Cake It. I'm Yolanda, and this week I have caked a juice box, a giant juice box that you can take back to school. And this giant juice box has a juicy center. Please be seated. Why wouldn't you be seated already? It's ridiculous. Yeah, I wouldn't be just on there. I'm the kind of teacher that makes you stand when I walk in the room. <laughs> to make my giant juice box cake, I am baking 20 pounds of my ultimate vanilla batter and dyeing it pink. If you'd like more information on how I divided my batter, just click the I. Once my cakes were baked, cooled, and chilled, I removed them from their pans. Now I level all three of my cakes and remove the caramelization from the bottom. If you haven't memorized my vanilla cake recipe by now, you can just recheck your textbook, the cake book, on page 24. Please memorize this by next week. There will be a quiz. It's time to simple syrup all three rectangles of my pink vanilla cake. And who do we use to simple syrup? So squeeze. Very good, Orhan, very good. Cody didn't even raise his hand. Why do you have earphones on, Cody? To hear you better. Okay, I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Fan. I like this. <laughs> I decided that since I'm making a giant juice box cake, it should contain juice. This is gonna be a secret chamber like no other. In order to do this, I am using a container, but plastic. Please don't attempt this with glass. I start with one layer of cake that's the exact size of my rectangular baseboard, the cake board. Then I lay the container on top, make sure it's centered by measuring, use a sharp serrated knife, and I cut around the container. This way I know the base of the container fits snugly in the cake. Then I spread a nice layer of Italian meringue buttercream, take my next cake layer, and once again, cut that opening. But because my container is a bit beveled, so it gets wider, just slightly as it goes up, I need to cut that opening slightly bigger each time to make sure the container will fit. This is not really cake 101. This, this is, is more like no, your this is, pieces. This is, yeah, this is like the masters. This is your PH, this is your CHD. <laughs> Wait, what does a PhD stand <laughs> for? PhD. Isn't it something, something doctorate, please? Yes, use your phone, please. It's not player hate and degree. That's what I think it is. But I know it really doesn't stand for that. What? Player and what? <laughs> player hate and degree. Oh. Or, you have to go home and research Puff Daddy, okay? That's your homework for tonight, because you should have known what I said. Once I was three layers up, it was time to insert the container. For those of you watching this lecture online, your homework is to share this video. Share the knowledge. Please share this video with your fellow students worldwide. Thank you. I can't just plop a board on top. Well, I never plop a board on top, but <laughs> I need to cut a hole in the board because I need to maneuver the board over the container and get it down over these cake layers that are already in place. But first, I do need to dowel the cake that's in place to hold up and support that board. Oh my God. Right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and now I carefully maneuvered that board over the container put it down, and I'm gonna start building with cake up again around the container. But the tricky part here is the container's already inside, so I can no longer use it to measure. So now I'm going to use the holes that I cut out of cake to measure. Whoa! Right? To make sure that I don't get any crumbs into my container while I'm building this cake, I'm gonna cover the top with plastic. So for the last few layers, I had to piece together and sort of build the cake in strips around the container, which was much better because the top of the container also had these little things that I guess helped the lid clip on. And so it would have been difficult to hold a full piece and get it over without breaking it. Are you taking notes? Of course. Why don't I see your paper? It's, I take them on my phone. Good, but no texting. I enjoy these glasses. <laughs> I really do. So now we've built our cake up to the top of the container. What I need to do is just take a serrated knife and make sure that my cake is flush with the top of the container. But I also don't want to get any crumbs in my container. So do this very carefully. Yeah? What did you just do? <laughs> <laughs> You're acting like a real student. And I'm going to 
use this moment to just trim all four sides of the cake. This is much easier to do when your cake is chilled, making sure they're straight. Remember that center board we put in is the same size as the bottom board. So no cake should be sort of sticking out farther than the edges of our boards. So now that all four of my sides are nice and straight and my cake is flush with the top of my container, what do you think it's time to do, class? You don't have an, it's not uh. Okay, great, great. Both of you, I want you to stay after class. The next step is to crumb coat and chill. I carefully crumb coat all four sides of the cake and a little bit of cake sticking out on top and I place this cake back in the fridge. I'm going to move on and make the rest of the juice box, which will sit on top of what we just crumb coated and chilled, but I'm going to build it as a separate cake on its own board. I'm going to take my two perfect rectangles and layer them into two layers. So now I have four thinner layers of cake, but they're still the same width and depth as the rest of the cake in the fridge. Because this is a giant juice box, I will need to later insert a giant straw. So I cut a hole from my board and then I use my board and lay it on top of each layer with a circle cutter and make sure to cut that same hole out of all four layers of cake. Now I'm going to fill and stack these cakes on the same size board with Italian meringue buttercream. And then I'm going to do what? Crumb coat and chill. Very good, I'm glad you listened. Should I teach the whole class through a megaphone? Crumb coat and chill. I like being bossy. I like mm -hmm. acting bossy. I don't know why. <laughs> Is there some kind of job where I can act bossy? <laughs> Jocelyn's job. Oh, please leave that in. <laughs> please leave this in, Jocelyn. Wait a minute, teacher me wouldn't say that. <clears throat> Jocelyn, leave this in. I want this left in the edit. This is my class. <clears throat> now that my, the top half of my cake is chilling, I'm gonna pull out the bottom half and I'm going to add dowels once again to that upper portion of cake that is above that middle cake board. So we cut all our dowels to the same height and we insert them. I also want to add a long sharpened dowel that is the height of the entire cake. So one dowel on each side of the container that will go through the middle board. And now it's time to fill this container with juice. Watermelon juice. Watermelon juice. You know, everyone's always asking what happened to Walter. <laughs> Oh my god, you're not serious, are you? I, no, 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 no. It's the <laughs> juice of another watermelon. It's time to add the top. I carefully pick up my second cake and place it on top. I'm very really afraid to ask, mm -hmm. how heavy was this cake? Yes, I was so scared of this cake and its height and the board sort of resting on that plastic container that I decided to add even more dowels. So I'm gonna add two more dowels that are now the entire length of the whole cake, sharpened once again, so it can go down through two boards on either side. And I had to make sure to remember where the last two long dowels were, so I wouldn't hit a dowel. <laughs> I'm very really impressed right It was so... You need like x-rays and stuff. It was so this. hard. And now it's time to ice this entire cake. It's pretty tricky because I don't have a spatula that's as tall as this cake. So I'm going to use both a small and a large offset spatula, carefully working my way around the cake and use a tall bench scraper to just sort of get around all four sides until I'm happy and then I'm going to chill it. We're really celebrating back to school on how to cake it and over on how to cake it step by step, our cake community member Cassie is also celebrating with a new cake. We're celebrating back to school because none of us are going back to school. This week, she's whipped up a quick breakfast for you all with her cereal bowl cake. Yep, there's a floating milk carton resting over it too. Make sure you check it out and you can also find the link in the description below. It's time to cover this cake. I'm going to roll slabs of green fondant and first work on covering the two sides of this cake. The first thing I do is cut each slab of fondant to the exact height of my cake. And then I apply one slab at a time to one side, smoothing it with a fondant smoother. 
and then I use a sharp paring knife to trim it flush with the cake. And I do that again on the other side of the cake. Now I have to repeat this process, rolling two slabs of green fondant that are tall enough and wide enough to cover the back and front of this rectangle. I trim them and apply them in the same way, and once again, cut them flush. A fondant smoother is the perfect tool for a cake like this because it's a giant rectangle. So it's really helpful for smoothing the fondant along the sides and sort of around the corner of the cake. And you can pick up your own fondant smoother 40% off at howtokickit.com. You get a fondant smoother and you get a, that's what I would do in my class. <laughs> this is a good class. It's almost as good as a car. Now I need to roll more green fondant just to cover the top of this cake. So I roll a slab of green fondant, place it on top, and then trim all of the sides. The next thing I need to do is chill this cake so that I can become the seam hider. <laughs> Not only do I have my CDD, but I am also a registered SH. So it's time to make a fondant paste with a little bit of my extra green fondant, some clear food grade alcohol, and I'm just gonna mix these two together with a palette knife until I have a spreadable royal icing consistency. And then I use this mixture with a small spatula and I patch all the seams all of... <laughs> Who threw that? Cody. Absolutely not. <laughs> Cody, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave, okay? Because this cut... It says Turkish Airlines. <laughs> For the rest of the design, I need to roll out some bonnet nice and thin, and I need white, black, pink, and red. I roll them all out in thin sheets, and I place them aside to chill while I cut out my template, my beautiful template. One of our international students, Celine, who uh, does her correspondence online with How to Cake It, she designed the juice box for me. So thank you, Celine. It's not like either one of you two offered. Once I've used an X-Acto knife to cut all these pieces out of my paper template, I carefully lay them onto the correct color, and then I use the tip of my paring knife to cut all of these pieces out of fondant. Because it's so hot in here, I'm going to rest these pieces in the fridge to chill while I work on the top of the juice box. I roll out a big piece of red fondant, and now I have to carefully take that piece of fondant and place it on the front of the cake and wrap it around the sides. <laughs> I need to trim the shape of the watermelon. So for this, I'm using the biggest parts of my template, laying it up against the cake, and I'm just using the tip of my sharp knife to cut along those lines. So it's sort of rounded and wrapped around the juice box. For the side little sort of flaps, I roll out some more red fondant. I cut two triangles out of that fondant and I add one to each side of the cake, lining up with that top red strip. That's sweet. <sighs> Whose phone was that? I'm, I think I'm going to retire and... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna retire and just follow my passion of seam hiding. For the final flap of fondant on top, I'm gonna roll out one long piece and I'm gonna use my triangle template to cut each side into a triangle. And then I used a ruler and a sculpting tool to draw sort of an indent along the long side of this piece. So now I need to carefully pick up this piece, align it so that when I fold it over the sides, those side triangles meet up with the other two triangles that have already been placed. Now I get to return to my passion, make some red fondant paste, and hide the seams at the top of the cake. Subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so you will be notified of next week's lecture where we go through the anatomy of a very popular toy and we build that toy out of cake. If you can guess what it is, leave a comment below. I also have to make the little bit of rind of course watermelons have rind. So for this I had rolled out some white fondant and I tried to roll out a band and sort of chill it in a circular formation. So I, now I glue that band around the cake and I have to carefully trim one side of the band to meet the inside of the watermelon. So I have to trim it perfectly where it overlaps that bed. And on the other side of the band, it's gonna be, this is a wacky watermelon. 
So I'm just gonna sort of freehand cut. I don't want a perfect white line. This watermelon is too wacky for that. <laughs> Speaking of wacky watermelons, where is Walter? We're almost done class, he hasn't even shown up. And now I use my template to line up all the parts and the letters and the seeds of this beautiful juice box design and glue them to the cake with clear piping gel. Over at howtocakeit.com, we are having a back to school sale and everything you need to make this cake and more is 40% off. What was all that? What was all that kerfuffle? Oh, Walter! Walter, you do not have to join us. I don't even know why you're here. You obviously don't like it here. You don't watch your CDD. Walter, just leave. Just leave. This juice box looks amazing, but it's missing something that makes it a juice box, I think. Can you tell me what that is, class? What was the question? <laughs> For the straw, you know what, I really thought long and hard about this. So you know how they make a plastic tube that you can use to cover your shower rod if it's getting old or rusty? And I just added some red tape and made it look like a straw. You guys can check out last week's Yo Cone Cake right here and Cassie's Cereal Bowl Cake over on How to Cake It Step by Step. Um, Miss Camp, I think there's something on your bag. Yeah, there totally is. <laughs> cake me. Orhan, I'll see you after class and I'll see you all next week.